being really excited and then losing that child and then, you know, burying that child uh, was, um, it was, it was, it was incredibly sad. And that's what I told myself is whenever, I, if ever anything happens that's negative or that's bad or that's, you know, scary, whatever that is, just remember that moment. of your eyes among the streets and you know walking in and seeing it all for me that was it was one of the most beautiful moments I've had in my life and it brought me so much peace if the world ever goes crazy I'm, I'm going to Fatima basically <laughs> is what I thought uh, and 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 like I said to every anytime I anytime we're going through anything if if this is what heaven's like I want to experience this every day for the rest of my life Hi, my name is Alex Trevino. Uh, I live here in Irving, Texas with my wife Amanda and our four kids. Um, I am a, uh, the owner of a marketing agency. We create content and help distribute content to small business owners um, all across the country. That's what I do. Um, my background is in acting. We studied, my wife and I actually together studied drama uh, right down the street from here at the University of Dallas. So I'm going to talk a little bit about my uh, mine and my family's devotion to Our Lady, specifically under the appearance of Our Lady of Fatima. So it started when I was eight years old. Uh, my parents took my sister and I uh, on a trip to Europe for a month. So my dad uh, came to the United States from Mexico. His dream was always to make it big in the United States, the American dream, and to travel. And he was able to really figure that out and uh, took us traveling all the time. And you know, as my parents' faith grew, we started doing trips that were more centered on our faith than just having fun, right? And so um, I was able to get my first communion done in Rome. And part of that trip was we were gonna go to Portugal and to Spain and to France, and then it culminated with my first communion. So I had a pretty awesome experience for my first communion. And the first stop we made was in Lisbon, Portugal. I was eight years old for this trip. I remember the trip very vividly. We went to Fatima. And so we had already, you know, read about the story and I'd seen the, the animated videos, you know, so I knew a little bit about uh, her and the appearance and the impact that it had on the world. And I remember showing up with my family to Fatima and just seeing the, the beautiful church, you know, the, the big, huge plaza outside you know, the little area where she actually appeared where the statue sits, the rosary at night with the candlelight procession. We, you know, we got to visit the homes where the, the shepherds grew up. Uh, we got to meet very, very old and extended family members of the shepherds. I, I still have a picture with me. I think it was um, Sister Lucia's like, cousin, one of her cousins. This, this guy was probably like 80, 90 years old when I met him. But there's a picture of us standing in front of her house and got, going to see where the angel appeared to the three shepherd children. Uh, I still have those very vivid memories of walking along where they walked, experiencing what they experienced. I was their age when, you know, when, when all these things happened to them in their lives. So it was very easy for me to picture what it would have been like if I was eight years old in 1917 and having an angel appear to me and give me communion and then Our Lady appear to me and then the vision of hell and all those different things, the, the beautiful prayers, the miracle of the sun. They, they, it was very easy for me to put myself in their shoes because I was their exact age when those things happened to them. So that was my first experience with Our Lady of Fatima. On that trip as well, we got to visit Our Lady of Lourdes in Lourdes, France. I got to visit Fatima again in 2011. I got to go to World Youth Day and we were able to finish that trip and say, hey, well, we're gonna add two days to the trip and go right down the street to Fatima because if we were in Madrid, Fatima's right there. So we went for two days, I was 21 years old. And I can't explain it to you with, with a whole lot of words. It's a whole lot of 
emotions and feelings of sort of what happened for me on that two day trip. But the memory that I have is being with my group, going to pray the rosary with the candlelight procession that they do pretty much every night. And I just remember having the thought of if I'm ever going through anything in life where it's a struggle, where there's issues, where you know my faith is failing, where um, you know my my family and I are in a rough spot. If there's anything that I'm going through in life that's negative, just think about this moment. And that moment was you know being with my group, seeing a million candles lit, you know hearing people singing the rosary. For me, that was it was one of the most beautiful moments I've had in my life, and it brought me so much peace. And that's what I told myself is whenever I, if ever anything happens that's negative or that's bad or that's, you know, scary, whatever that is, just remember that moment because that's the most at peace I've ever felt in my life was sitting there or standing there, walking around and seeing all these hundreds of thousands of people praying the rosary together. To me, it felt like that's what heaven's going to be like, is what it felt like to me, is this is exactly what it's going to be like. And I want to feel this every day for the rest of my life. If the world ever goes crazy, I'm, I'm going to Fatima, basically, is what I thought. Uh, and, and, and like I said too, every, anytime, I, anytime we're going through anything, anytime I'm going through anything, uh, just thinking back to that time tends to solve a lot of problems for me. Um, it's really hard to explain, but it, it, it really is as simple as, you know, going through, a struggle with building my business, going through a struggle with a friend, going through a crisis in faith, um, just closing my eyes and remembering having that specific memory has been so helpful in terms of getting me out of any sort of issues, funks, um, you know, sit, uh, thoughts, negative thoughts, negative situations, is just remembering what that felt like in 2011 when I was there. Um, it's, a, it's, it's, you know, it's probably the most vivid memory that I have of my Catholic faith and, and is being there in Fatima with hundreds of thousands of people praying the rosary. It, it, it impacted me in a way where, you know, I can literally close my eyes right now and feel like I'm back over there right now. It was very powerful, just a very, very powerful experience. And telling my wife that story talking to my kids about Our Lady of Fatima, showing them the, the, you know, the animated videos about the lives, you know, showing them pictures, reading books with them about this, having pictures of Our Lady of Fatima around our house, telling our kids that you're named after incredible people who truly changed the world. That's how I'm able to impact my family, is by sharing that story with them and having them understand that she plays a huge role in your life as well, and she can play it if you let her do it. And so in, in my journey, you know, growing up, getting married, having kids, starting a business, things like that, Our Lady of Fatima has definitely been a, a massive influence on my life. She's been a very uh, peaceful presence in my life. She's brought me a lot of solace, a lot of joy, uh, and has gotten us, me and us, through a lot of difficult things. The most recent example of uh, going through something very difficult was a miscarriage that my wife and I suffered about uh, a few months ago. And, you know, when we found out about um, the, the child that we were gonna have, uh, we were scared. We were, because we've already, we already have, we have four kids. They're beautiful, incredible, awesome kids. And very quickly we were having our fifth kid. So at first it was fear. It's like, oh my gosh, what are we gonna do? This is like, this, this is a lot of kids happening really fast. But then we realized every, of course, every child's a gift. Every child matters. It, this child's gonna bring us so much joy. And we were so excited to be parents to the fifth child. And it was right around the time that we started feeling that excitement when we lost the baby. And, you know, going through that process of, you know, first being scared, not really knowing what God's plan is and then being really excited and then losing that child and then, you know, burying that child uh, was, um, it was, it was, it was incredibly sad. We were at around the fifth month of pregnancy 
So we, you know, it was already, a, it was to the point where me as the dad, it was getting real, you know, because like the first couple of weeks when your wife is pregnant, you, you, she doesn't, she's not showing, so you, you don't really believe it. And then suddenly the stomach starts growing and, you know, things start getting real. It's like, okay, it's actually happening. It was at that, it was around that time when for me, it started sinking in. This is actually happening. I'm very excited is when we lost uh, that baby. And then in the span of two weeks, like I said, we lost the baby, the baby comes out, we buried him and uh, named him Gabriel. And it was a, uh, yeah, it was a very difficult part of our lives. And it's something that we're still dealing, struggling with now. But what we've been able to do is really turn to Our Lady for this, because I know that you know, her son has a plan. We may not see it the way he sees it, but he sees things perfectly, right? And being able to lean on her, pray together as a family, ask for her intercession, ask for her, her prayers, ask for her to you know, bring our petitions to uh, her son the way that you know, she did in Cana, um, it, it's, that's brought a lot of peace. And that's one thing that we've figured out along the way is, is realizing we don't really know what God's plan is. We don't know how Mary works. We don't know how this is all going to work out in the end, but we have to have faith that God knows what he's doing. And, um, and it's in, in that relationship that I've had a lo almost my entire life with Our Lady um, has, has definitely helped m our family. And now being able to you know, share that with my wife and my kids. Uh, has definitely uh, helped us get through those really tough times, uh, especially, you know, especially the miscarriage. Um, with our kids, you know, what I wanted to do was to make sure that we as a family honored Our Lady of Fatima in a very special way. So two of our kids are named after the shepherds. We have our daughter, her middle name is Jacinta, and then the, our son, his middle name is Francisco. And what was really interesting too is we, we hadn't thought about it until right before you know, our daughter was born was the world was going through COVID-19 and the pandemic and Jacinta, St. Jacinta, she died in the last pandemic that happened 100 years ago in the Spanish flu. And so it was really special to be, to be able to name our daughter in a really weird and strange time in the world you know, when she, Jacinta, lived through that exact same experience and, and died because of it a um, hundred years before. And so that was a very, I don't know, the timing just worked really perfectly with that, where it was a very special time to give our daughter that name. I grew up going to a, a private Catholic K through 12 school. She went to a massive public school. You know, her high school graduating class was 900 students. Mine was 12. We come from very, very different backgrounds, right? But she was still Catholic. But she, you know, it was much more the typical, I guess, American Catholic life, which is you go to Sunday school and then doesn't really get talked about the rest of the week. And for me, it was I was surrounded by Catholicism 24/7. Right, so, you know, I was able to just know a lot more about the faith than she did. And it's a testament to my wife's faith that she trusted me when, when it, when, that she trusts me when it comes to calling the shots for my family, when it comes to aspects of the faith. It's a massive testament to how much faith that she has in God, how much faith she has in the Catholic Church, how much faith she has in the Blessed Virgin Mary, and everything that the Church stands for. Because it's really fascinating because she, the way to describe it is my wife for our family plays the role that Mary played in salvation history. And she does it with our family, with our little family unit. You know, she, she says yes to God without questioning. She says yes to God the same way that Mary said yes to God 2,000 years ago, just with not really questioning anything and just accepting that this is, you know, this is this is God's will. Um, and so when it came time to share these 
stories of different places that I've, I've been to Our Lady, seen Our Lady of Guadalupe and Our Lady of Fatima, Our Lady of Lourdes. You know, she, it, I guess the way to describe it would be, she, she accepted that that's the journey that the fam, this family is gonna go through, is having these, this devotion to Our Lady and saying, you know, we're gonna make that a priority in our family life. Um, it, and, and like I said, it's a, it's a testament to how much faith she has. And knowing that, you know, my role as the leader of the household, you know, making sure that my kids, our kids become saints is primarily my job and I have to set that example. And she, and she follows it perfectly. Um, and and it, it's, it's a, yeah, it's a testament to how much, how much faith she has. Because she's never been to Fatima. You know, she's never seen all those things. She hasn't been able to experience, you know, sitting in front of that house where the kids grew up in. She hasn't gone to Our Lady of Guadalupe and Tepeyac Hill. And, you know, and, and so I can imagine how difficult it is to just say, okay, yeah, it's great. You love, you love Our Lady, you've done all these great things, but like, I, you know, I haven't seen any of that. How do I, you know, accept that this is the, the way that this family is gonna go. This is the devotion this family is gonna have. It's through the experiences that I've had that she's been able to see you know, the, the beauty of these places. Um, and and it, it shows just how, you know, how mysterious God is too. How, how mysterious he is in the sense that, you know, he can put two people together, two different experiences and say, it's, 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 it's gonna work, you know? And, and, and like I said, it's a, it, I've said it a million times, it's the, it's, it, it shows how much faith my wife has. In, in regards to my faith journey, the, it was, really comes from my parents. Right? So my parents were fallen away Catholics, but they knew that Catholic education was important. And so they put us in, my sister and I, in a very small Catholic school that was just getting started in San Antonio, Texas. And they knew that they needed to put us somewhere that was, you know, that was strict, that had good education, good values, even though they didn't really follow those values themselves. They said, we need to put them in that structure. And then the, 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 the thing with my uh, Catholic school growing up was we had required daily mass. So as a school, we went to mass every single day. It wasn't once a week, once a month, special occasions. It was every single day going to mass. So my parents said, okay, that's gonna give our kids so much discipline, we're in, right? Put us into that school. And what ended up happening was my sister and I started working on our parents because we said, hey, we're going to Mass Monday through Friday. We need to go to Mass on Sundays too because that's what Father said. And so my parents started taking us to Sunday Mass. And then little by little, the, the faith for my parents absolutely exploded. And they were all in on their faith. And seeing them go all in on their faith made it so easy for my sister and I and eventually my brother to go all in on our faith as well because we had the example from our parents who did what was best for us in the beginning, not really understanding why, just knowing we got to put them in a good environment, but then their lives being so radically changed uh, because of my sister and I and just being in, in that community and in that culture every single day. So that's where it really started for me was through that journey. And I'm very fortunate and blessed that I was able to be in Catholic education from preschool all the way through college. So I have, you know, I've got to be in a Catholic environment all of my formative years. And it's a blessing, right? Because you get to be around all of that, all of that beauty for the most important time of your life. Even being around the Catholic Church as much as I've been around, there's still been struggles and there's still been, you know, questioning faith, especially when tragic things have happened. And I can't explain it, how somehow God allows me to, and my family to always correct the ship and keep moving forward, but it always ends up that way. One of the things that has helped my family and I really course correct and right the ship and continue on the path forward is when we realize that Mary is our mother, that Mary is my mother. When we do things like pray the rosary together as a family, even though it's hard when there's 
kids running around and screaming and yelling and want the TV on. You know, you, and so we say, fine, we're gonna pray it when we're all in the car together because at least we're contained there, you know? When we read about her life, when we study the different appearances that she's, that she's blessed this world with, when we, you know, look into the impact that she's had, um, really diving in there into that and, and understanding and accepting that Mary is truly my mother, that's when the ship tends to correct in life, is when I, I, I accept that, I re-accept it, right? And that's where I feel, that's what I feel that my faith journey has been over the years, is I'm super into it, and then something happens where, I, you know, I, the ship is not perfectly sailing. But then I've found that Mary's always been there to help me get back on track. Fatima will go down as the greatest of Marian apparitions in history. It all began on May 13th in the year 1917 when three shepherd children, Lucia dos Santos, her cousins Francisco Marto and Jacinta Marto, witnessed a vision of the Virgin Mary standing in front of them in the fields of Cova de Iria. messages of peace and of prayer, and they even saw a vision of hell. Many thousands of people began to gather in that area, and they saw the children there seeing the Virgin Mary, the Blessed Mother of God. These messages were distributed to the faithful, made it all around the world, making Fatima the greatest of all Marian devotions. The greatest miracle that happened related to Fatima was the Great Sun Miracle, which occurred on October 13th, in which the thousands of people there who had been gathered to hear those messages of Our Lady and to witness a miracle. drenched in a rainstorm, and they looked up to the sky, and they saw the sun growing in size and spinning and descending on them. Was it mass hallucination? I'm not quite sure. There were, the people there who were drenched previously were instantaneously dried, and people witnessed this miracle from many miles away. Our Lady of Fatima goes down as one of the greatest apparitions in church history, and Pope John Paul II beatified two of those visionaries and released the third secret of Fatima that related to the assassination of a bishop in white. He, of course, relates that to his own assassination attempt on the feast of Our Lady of Fatima, taking the bullet from that assassination and placing it in the crown of Our Lady of Fatima. Our Lady of Fatima will go down as the greatest Marian apparition in the history of the Catholic Church. Sadness. Are you seeking solutions? Bible says, do not be anxious about anything. Instead, 
pray about everything. Choose faith over fear.